In all 48 <laughs> states, there are some uh, some states are reopening, uh, in even in cases of uh, spiking in part of the country. But it's not opening fast enough for everyone. And on Friday, stay-at-home protesters on Long Island turned their anger on the reporter who was there trying to cover them so they could explain what they were upset about. Take a look. You are the enemy of the people. You are fake news. We know about your liberal agenda. We know you want to keep your job. We get it. You're not getting advertiser dollars in right now. You want to you're not going to answer. You're gonna answer. So you're just going to go live. You yes, I am getting a paycheck. I'm very happy. So, but other people stop. are not getting paychecks. And That's they're not good here. You used to be a good channel at one time. You allow people. I don't know what happened to you. Fake news is not essential. 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 Now, the protest organizers apologized for the bad apples who apparently went after the reporter. But you know who retweeted the report, calling them great people. Now, does it surprise anyone? Does it surprise you, Joy? <laughs> does it, nothing that he ever does that you know who does, nothing just surprises me. I'm not certainly not surprised by this, because let's not forget uh, when he called white supremacists and neo-Nazis in Charlottesville great people, quote unquote. Um, you know, it's his M.O. to destroy the press, because the press will tell you the truth, and the truth hurts him uh, in his re-election plan. And, you know, he's worried. He's very worried. Uh, Joe Biden is pulling ahead. Not that this is anything new. He's always been a denigrator of the truth, calling the press the enemy of the people, which is right out of uh, Putin's book and Stalin and Hitler and all the, all the dictators that he admires so much. I'm not sure he admired Hitler, but he certainly admires Putin. And that's what they do, is to denigrate well, Sonny, the press. That's the first thing dictators do. Yeah. Right. Sonny, you don't think this is uh, how most of the country is feeling right now. Is that right? No, I really... I, that's right. I, I really don't. And I think a lot of these protests are planned by small, <laughs> select groups. Uh, they're, they're generally Trump supporters, and they are certainly planned. And there have been a lot of polls that have been taken recently. The Pew um, Report has done one. The Washington Post has done one. And what's been so interesting to me is that 79 percent of the population will be that, that has responded has said that they are in favor of tighter restrictions if that will slow the spread. And 75 percent of those that have been furloughed, that have lost their positions, that are not being paid, still support the these restrictions. So those that have been affect, affected the most still want the stay-at-home restrictive orders. And so I, I think that this is just sort of people playing, you know, into Trump's hands. These are just this, this, these are like political ploys. Right. And Megan, you think this is getting more attention than it deserves? The story. Well, I do think Sonny is right that it is uh, it's a small group of protesters in Long Island, but I think their sentiments are something that I understand. I never agree with violence or yelling at the press because for all the obvious reasons, I don't think any of us do, but the American press has the worst approval rating of any and all American institutions, particularly with young people, the ages 35 and younger, there's the least trust in our media than any demographic. And I think part of the problem is when you blanket statement protesters like this as neo-Nazis in Charlottesville, these people, their sentiment, I understand. People are very frustrated right now. They want to go back to work. There's a lot of people in this country who would rather risk getting coronavirus than letting their business go under and having their families starve. And I do think maybe the media should take a look at why there's so much anger at them. And it's not just something, yes, Trump uses it to his benefit and gins up a lot of his supporters in that way. But why do you think there's such a huge distrust of these kind of institutions right now? And I think part of it is because there's just not a lot of representation for conservatives and Republicans and Trump supporters outside of Fox News, which is why Fox News is so popular. So I, I don't agree with the way people were behaving. It's just certainly not my attitude to yell at a journalist, but I do understand the sentiment behind it. Well, what was really interesting was this, uh, this reporter went out there to find out how they were feeling so that he could uh, broadcast their stories. But the other thing is, I keep asking myself, who in this country doesn't want to go back to work. 
Now, you can talk about degrees, but I don't think anybody in the country doesn't want to go back to work. But I think some people feel that they would be putting other people at risk were they to resurge with their former COVID-19. I think people are wanting to go back and do all of this, but to find a, a better way. And I think part of the problem has been the messiness out of Washington on to how to do this and the fact that no one knows very much about this disease, which seems to be four months old. So I think there's a lot of mess in all of this. But I want to stress again, I don't know anyone who doesn't want to get back to work. Anyone. I don't know anyone. And I don't know why people would put themselves on the line in order to uh, perhaps get COVID or, or pass it on to someone else without being cognizant of that possibility. We can do it. I think we just have to do it smarter.